Uh, we're going live in 15 minutes' time, so if you want to come in and take a seat, if you want to watch Tim Allen from the Flitcher Bacon, uh, Tim's going to be on stage. Tim's been really good to work with. He's actually got here early, which is unheard of for a chef. Uh, so Tim's arrived early with all of his products. Um, so he gets lots of brownie points for us for doing that. We as the staff canteen couldn't put these events on without the help of sponsors. I'll go around the other way this time. Over here with the very pink neon sign, we've got the team from Santa Maria. Go and talk to them. Go in the truck. Get your ears blasted out with some rap music. Go and have a chat with the team from Santa Maria. If you like Eminem, Snoop Dogg, that's the place to be. They're going to talk to you about herbs, spices, about prominence. Uh, so go and have a chat with those guys. Ovation over there. Go and have a chat with the team at Ovation. They're going to keep us hydrated. Thank you very much to them for working with us. Our longest serving partner on the staff canteen, the amazing Essential Cuisine. Go and have a chat with Jonathan and the team at Essential Cuisine over there. What's, what's cooking over there on the Essential Cuisine stand? Chicken. We got anything to go with... Got anything to go with Tim's KFC chicken wings? <laughs> what? Oh, it's 20167, my birthday. Okay, next up, our headline sponsors, the team at Westlands, Will and James at Westlands. Go and have a chat with them. Uh, we're going to be getting some herbs into the audience that Tim's using. Um, I know Tim's going to be using the micro coriander, the shiso, the apple blossom and the Thai basil. So we're going to get some students round to get that out into the audience for you. We are. Yeah, why? He said it really quickly. Okay, so what? He said it just seems more sort of general. Oh, it's only hours. Okay, we'll do it from start to finish. Okay, do you want me to read that next? No, I can read on this. Okay, come and take a seat, ladies and gentlemen. Come and grab a seat. Are you hungry, guys? You look hungry. Come and take a seat. We're cooking. Take a seat, gents. So, come in, everyone. Take a seat. Come in, ladies and gentlemen. Take a seat. So all of you that come in, take a seat. You're going to have a chance to win a Michelin star meal for two at the Flitch of Bacon. We had a networking lunch there uh, two or three months ago. The food is amazing. Um, so if you come in, if you come in and take a seat, we're going to give you a raffle ticket. And uh, we're going to draw out at the end of this, one of you is going to win a Michelin star meal for two at the Flitch of Bacon. So come in and take a seat. Tim's going to be on stage in 10 minutes' time, so come in and take a seat. If you want to watch this gentleman cook his, his uh, barbecue chicken wings. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, come on in, um, grab a seat. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, come on in. We've got, we've got a couple of seats left. Just come on in and grab a seat. Uh, we're going to be going live very shortly. 
Uh, yeah, I do. Sorry. Is he around? If you see him before I do, I've told all the other people. We're going to do a minute silence for Andrew. Okay, come on in, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a couple of seats left. So come on in and grab a seat. Uh, if you want the opportunity to dine at Tim's restaurant, uh, Tim has really kindly given us dinner for two at the Flitcher Bacon. Uh, so it's dinner for two at the Flitcher Bacon. Come in and take a seat. We'll give you a raffle ticket. That raffle ticket will go into our champagne bowl. And uh, when we've, at the end of this, Tim's going to draw it out. And one lucky person plus one will be going to the Flitcher Bacon for an amazing meal. As I said, about three months ago, the staff canteen was there. We had a networking lunch there. Uh, five courses of absolutely amazing food. Tim won a Michelin star this year, 2019. Uh, he's had a Michelin star before at the Wild Rabbit uh, in Kingham. Uh, he, before that, he was at Launceston Place. He had a Michelin star there. Uh, he's had an amazing career, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, we're going to talk to him about the dish, what inspired him. Roast chicken, yeah. So come in, take a seat. Very quickly, sponsors, thank you. Team over there at Santa Maria, go and have a chat with them. Guys, don't stand up. It looks really untidy. Come and take a seat. Come and take a seat. Those of you who are sat down or go into the prize draw first, come and take a seat. Team at Santa Maria, thank you to those guys. Team at Ovation, thank you to those guys. The crazy gang from Essential Cuisine, they've even brought Heather down. Heather's come all the way down and hasn't brought me custard creams. Thank you to the team at Essential Cuisine. The team at Westlands, our headline sponsors, thank you very much to them. Team at Pomery Champagne, thank you to those guys. The amazing team from UCB College, we've got the students from UCB. Uh, the team from UCB College for very kindly supplying us with, um, with students. Thank you to the team from UCB. Thank you to the team from Hosinyaki uh, for keeping our champagne cold. Thank you to the team at Pomery for supplying us with champagne for the chefs. So come in, grab a seat. There's a couple of, oh, there's a reserve seat. There's a couple of seats here. We like to be cozy. Come and take a seat. Um, if you sit, if. Okay, so come in and take a seat. Uh, we will go live. Okay, so as you can see, we are, we're live streaming this on Facebook, we're live streaming it on YouTube if you want to get us on those channels. Um, all of our social media handles are here. You can get us on Instagram, we're at The Staff Canteen. Facebook, we are The Staff Canteen. Uh, uh, we're on this thing called Snapchat. Who's on Snapchat? We're way ahead of the game, huh? You on Snapchat, sir? No, me neither. Apparently, we've got a filter on Snapchat, okay? I'm sure you all know what that means. Uh, you can get us on YouTube. We are Staff Canteen on YouTube because I forgot the the when I set the channel up. Uh, you can get us on Twitter. We are at Canteen Tweets on Twitter. Um, give us a follow. Take some pictures. Use the hashtag. We are TSC Live. So we are hashtag TSC Live. Okay. So Tim's already. We're going to we're going to kick Tim off very politely in a minute. Off stage, off stage yeah. We're going to kick you off stage because we're going to pretend no one's seen you and they're going to go bonkers when you come on stage. So Tim's come up from Essex today, as I said earlier. Uh, Tim's got three young kids, so he decided he would find a hotel close to the NEC last night because he wanted a bloody good night's sleep. Anyone who's got young kids will know exactly what he's going through at this moment. I'm all right, Jack. 
All right, Joe? Okay, so we got any more spaces left? Yeah, there's a space here if anyone wants to see. Who wants to win dinner at a Michelin star restaurant? Take a seat, sir. We'll give you a raffle ticket. You don't get raffle tickets standing. It looks untidy when you stand. Come and take a seat. I'm on a bums on seat commission. Okay. Has everybody got raffle tickets? Have we done the raffle tickets yet? So come on in, take a seat. Let us scan you, please. Come on in and, come on in and take a seat. Okay, so um, slight change of plan. We're going to come on a little bit early, and I'll explain why very shortly. Um, so, bugger off. They're, they're going to clap you on. <laughs> it's like a simple instruction. What is it with you chefs? <laughs> right, if you can all just pretend you didn't do that, okay? So, please, put your hands together. Welcome on stage the amazing Tim Allen. Is that okay? <laughs> Ellis, come on up as well. Ellis Barry's here, come on up. This is Joe from UCB College. Okay, so um, we, we were going live, uh, we are going live at 11 o'clock, um, but we've had some, well, some tragic, tragic news today. Um, Andrew Fairley from restaurant Andrew Fairley. Um, Um, Andrew lost his life today, um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to mark it with a, with a minute silence um, at, at 11 o'clock. So if you can just uh, all, all bear with us till 11. Um, I just want to read this out. Sadly today the legendary chef Andrew Fairley has passed away. Um, Andrew was a truly inspirational chef. Um, it was taken far too soon, and the staff canteen would like to dedicate a minute's silence to Andrew. He was a true gentleman and will be sadly missed. Um, on a slightly separate note, we get to have an amazing job doing this, and we get to eat in amazing restaurants. And I ate in Andrew Fairley's restaurant with my wife more than any other restaurant in the world. And I think that probably says what Andrew meant to us at the staff canteen. What are we doing for time? Is it 11 yet? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, one minute please, Andrew Fairley.
Okay, everyone, thank you very, very much. Uh, round of applause, thank you. Thank you, Ellis. Tim, thank you for that. Um, what are we cooking, Chef? Uh, we're cooking uh, roast uh, comfy chicken wings, uh, barbecue slow rack, koju, which is a like, fermented yeasted rice, like a barba style, um, with a cat's bush as you grow. Off we go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is, uh, is the chicken wings. And we're going to talk about the bits in a second. So this is Joe here, who's helping us out today. Welcome, Joe. So Joe Round of applause for Joe, everyone, please. Grated, le grated uh, lemon on there. Third of that. Fine, great bit of garlic and break a bit of raisin in there, Joe. And mix it all together, please. Okay, so Joe's getting the chicken wings ready there. Also, that's a key element. These get marinated for around 24 hours in a certain amount of salt and aromat. So that by the time they've had the 24 hours, uh, they're seasoned, but they're not over salty. And you don't have to wash them, so it returns all the flavour on there. The second element, which we can't do, unfortunately, can't do live, um, is the celeriac, an, quite an underused vegetable. So this, this bad boy here has had um, 12 hours at 80 degrees sous vide, and that retains its, you can see that, pretty feels solid, but it's cooked all the way through. If anyone wants to look at that later, you're more than welcome. And we've got a, a, a jus in the bottom there, and that's pure celeriac juice. Now that we keep that, because uh, we don't have any waste at all, and that's going to get used to add to the cozy rice uh, to go on top of the uh, on top of the celeriac. So this is koji, if you can all see it at a distance, you'll taste it shortly. This is where we the yeast um, rice down to ferment it to this stage, and you can make this to use sake, um, among other things, and it's got a real amami style flavour to it. I'm going to just uh, master the induction of. Uh, ready again? Super. So these wings are going to be be marinated for uh, a day. They're going to go in the pan, skin side down, like this, and they get roasted for around about 12 minutes um, at 180 degrees in the oven. So Tim, is this a dish that's on the menu at the moment? Yeah, it's on the tasting menu, Mark. Yeah. On the tasting menu. Yeah. So we're just making it a little bit bigger for today. Yep. Basically. So this, this is really hot. So the original Slayerac we had, um, we set up the barbecue, um, a big green egg barbecue with, with uh, quite some really hot coals until they go white. And then we place the, the Slayerac on there and keep turning this constantly to achieve to burn it, completely burn it. Um, I actually saw this, just actually shown this by um, my best friend Daniel in Midsummer House originally. He uses it as a slayer dish, I use it as a garnish. So this you're all going to taste shortly, which Joe will organise in a short while. Um, and that's the You've read the brief! Flavor. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not, yeah, I'm not totally daft, yeah. Partially. I totally. promise anyone sitting down is going to get to try something, okay? We tell all the chefs they need to get samples out in the audience. None of them ever read the bloody brief, and Tim has, so well done, Tim. Makes a, makes a change, Mark, because I don't normally. Um, so, um, we've got the slayer rack we're going to reduce down in a second. Um, if I can get it to reduce. So I'm having fun with. It's going to be a second. Yeah. Peaceful, peaceful. Yeah, yeah that gives it a, like a pulse. So that's going to reduce down. We're going to mix that with our rice. Cheers, mate. And then some herbs. Cool. In here, on this tray here, we've got what is going to make the plate up. Okay, so we've got the chicken the wings. Box. We've just mentioned they're roasting in the oven. Obviously, these are quite a yeah. long process, so these get Sorry, taken down to this stage. And pressed. So, uh, Joe, if you want to grab your chicken wings up, this one's for our, for our taste. And then Joe's going to demonstrate here. So, there's two sets of bones and cartilage on the wings. What you got there, okay, man? we remove Probably the cartilage under, from the ends uh, and the bone ends. Tiger. And then we just carefully just pop the bones out of there, making sure there's no bones left inside. Get them down to that stage there. And then we press them and we get them down to this stage here. Okay, so these are ones that we've done a little bit before, ready for today's demo. Joe's then going to flake these down, like that, and then they're going to go through the oven to warm for you all to taste afterwards. So, so just while Tim's doing that, we've got some of the herbs coming into the audience that Tim's going to be using. Um, so there's a coriander coming round. Um, I'm looking for the person handing round the herbs. Oh, they're coming out shortly, sorry. So you're going to have a coriander, uh, and you've got a Thai basil. So have a little taste of those. If you want to go and have a chat with the team at Westerns, they can talk to you about the herbs that are coming round. And then a bit later on, we're going to be getting some chicken stock into the audience from the team at Essential Cuisine, so you can have a taste of that. So tell us what we're doing, Chef. 
Just checking the wings, Mark. Just going to reduce this down. Almost there. So it's going to go a little bit further. Because you were here earlier, do you think Cara would get a job in your team? Um, I, I, it was okay until she put the, uh, yeah. the, the steamer plastic handle yeah. in the 200 degree oven. That just kind of like, I was like, nah. <laughs> nah, she's just... Nah. She's, not, she's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, as part of the garnish for this, we're going to steam off some young leeks. Um, which is steam off in front because they need to be like just at a room temperature. That's a English leek that grown from close to me in Essex, um, about four miles away from the restaurant, just over. That celeriac juice we spoke about earlier, I mean, it's hard for you to see everything, but it, it goes down and it's got a real intensity of flavour. Mark, do you want to have a taste of that with the, t with the coffee? It'll go nice on me espresso. And there's a bit of cojo on there as well, so it's like a really intense sweetness. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Again, into that, we're going to put the uh, the cages. That's the rice going in. Seems a strange combination, but obviously, chicken and rice is quite a classical, quite a classical get together, really, in many different cuisines, um, particularly in this one. So we did. We had lots of jokes about this dish, obviously, Tim. But where was the real inspiration from? Tell us. Uh, KFC. <laughs> Breaded. I'm just taking the breadcrumbs away. You said to me no fryers, so. I just thought, we'll sack it off, we'll just do a roast. No, literally, I just love, when you have a roast chicken, for me, the best part is the oysters back, but alongside it's the wings. Yeah. I just love chicken, roast yep. chicken wings. Yeah. So the plan was just to kind of like bring that together in a dish. Um, the Japanese influences were, um, because at the minute I'm learning that, those flavors and those styles of cuisine, because obviously you never, and there's so much to learn in food, it's, it's unreal. Yeah. And I'm just playing with that at the minute. So um, hence the reason for the, the use of Japanese stuff. Um, so that celery that we've got over there that's burnt, we, we take slices off that and we cut it down to discs this size. Okay, this is the reason for the disc is just to fit onto the dish nicely. Um, and we're gonna grill these with a bit of the koji on. So we grill the rice onto the actual celery rack. Um, like that, so we pipe that on top. Tim, talk us a little, tell us a little bit about the Flitcher bacon covers days it's open, so how you got involved? So um, the Flitcher Bacon was originally put together by um, a chef called Daniel Clifford, who probably most of you probably know. Um, me and Daniel have been friends for 25 years. Um, I didn't take the business on when he first built it, first put together. Um, I came into the, uh, the business later as owner and partner alongside him and our main business partner. Um, the, the place has progressed quite a bit since we started. Um, we still got a lot to a lot to do, a lot to improve. We're open five days a week. Um, we do a la carte. We've just started the taste menu after year one, so we didn't do any taste menus at all in year one. Just started that process now, um, and that is just just astonishing. Mark, listen to customers. People are asking for it, so that's why we've done it. And we tend to that's how we tend to run the restaurant. Brilliant. Mainly on listening to people that are coming in and paying the bills, the door basically. Right. So your next uh, little mission. That's for that. Did you tell us what's in there, Tim? Well, in this pan here, we've got. Um, obviously, we couldn't make this today, guys, because it's a two-day process. But there's a um, a really unctuous brown chicken juice. If you leave stuff oh, down, the cam it. yeah, the cameras oh, will pick it up. It's all right. It's all right. I should have told you that before you came on. So they've got. Um, so now we've got a brown chicken juice. This is the all the winglets. We only use winglets for this, for the gelatine and the flavour, um, and that just gets cooked into like a brown sauce base. For the following uh, and the following day, it's reduced down and refreshed with more roasted chicken. Um, that's what we've got in the pan there. Um, into that, we're going to put some uh, katsubushi oil. It's smoked bonito fish, an oil infused smoked bonito fish. So, katsubushi, what is it? So, well, like it's the cats, cats of oil is basically smoked oil infused with smoked bonito. Oh, okay. Basically. Okay. Give it a really distinct, like, smoked flavour. And really bonito? Nice. It's tuna? It's like, a, yeah, like bonito fish, isn't it? Depends on fish, so, very nice. So, on this side here, into this, we're going to have one other sauce that goes on the plate. On the plate, time, right? yeah, no worries. Um, you've got uh, we put an emulsion on the plate now. Obviously, you've got an intense richness, smokiness, and you've got the the multi rice flavors going on. So we need some acidity there. So we, we I don't really use um, um, products through the menu. It's normally all natural, but in this instance, we need to create a mouthfeel with vinegars. But these vinegars are very specific. And they're for eating as they are, so you shouldn't cook them at all, otherwise you damage the flavours. Um, we have a, a black, a black vinegar, uh, black garlic vinegar, it's like a fermented garlic vinegar. Uh, 
bonito vinegar, so it's flavoured with the bonito fish again. We've got some um, soy that's been fermented with koji again, which is the salt element. And we've got a little bit of um, straight, what is it, a sake vinegar into there. Okay, this is going to make an emulsification. It's just going to glaze the chicken wings when they go on the plate. We've got some xanthan gum here, natural stabilizer and thickener and emulsifier. That's just to bring those vinegars together so we can get it onto the plate um, sensibly without putting neat vinegar everywhere. I'm going to bamish that together so it thickens up. But you'll see it thicken up in a short while. That's it. So you've had some chicken stock to taste in the audience? Yeah, have we had the herbs come out yet? Okay, great. If you need information on the stock, go and talk to Essential Cuisine. Information on the herbs, go and have a chat with Westlands. Oh, is that one on? Might uh, not no. be. No, okay. It's now, though. That's Cara. She turned it off earlier. Naughty. So S the coach the co the co you have just put on the, on the slayer out discs is the, the coach that we just reduced down on the slayer out discs. So you get a real sweetness and a marmy style finish to the, uh, to, to, the, to the rice. We'll stick it out of the way down there for the yeah. minute. Okay. So we've got some yeah. celery out to go out as well, haven't we, Chef? We have, yeah. We're going we're gonna to cut that up. Pack that up in a second. Joe's going to chop that up for us. Okay. We'll Ian, have piece. we got some little taster cups somewhere, please? Okay. I'll bob that chicken back in the oven. Nice and hot. In there. Okay, and then... Oh, sorry. I'm going to come to my board. Thank you. There, Joe, if you want to. So this, I'm going to cut this straight in half. So this is a, this is the celery that Tim cooked earlier. We're going to get this into the oven so you can have a taste of it. As you said, he sous vide it, and then you did what, Chef? You wrapped it in tin foil and cooked it in the oven, right? Well, it gets barbecued on. Barbecued, sorry. First, and then it's yep. just to, just to reheat it, Mark. So Joe, do you want to grab um, little um, some cups down there on cups? Some little taster cups there. Stick around that side for us. So if you sat down, you're going to try this. I did tell you if you sit down, you get fed. So you anyone? St anyone? St quite an intense. Can I smell that? I thought you wanted me to eat that. No, no, Mark. Not a, not a segment of orange. <laughs> it's got a really good. Oh, really Christ, good it's not a melon. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, we're just going to take it off like that for me. If you can. I know Daniel does a dish uh, on his tasting menu, doesn't he? With with barbecue yeah, celery. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. That's proper. Uh, Bear and ham. So take it down to that, Joe. And then just cut it into half. So, Tim, what's the why, why sous vide it? What, what's the benefit of cooking it sous vide? Um, it's just the low and slow. So, do you want to have a, have a go with that, John? That'd be great. Okay. Just the low and slow process, Mark, where you're respecting the vegetable. Yeah. You know, if you try and bake it in the oven, you don't retain its natural juices. Yeah. In this format, we get the juice and we get to use it as well. Yeah. Also, the, the, the burning element is purely to impart that flavor yep. into the rack afterwards. Tim, are you finding now, I mean, we're reading about it all the time, you know, flexitarians, vegetarians on the increase. Are you finding more and more people are asking for vegetarian food? Yeah, big time. And, and do you find now as a chef doing a mushroom omelette just isn't enough now for a vegetarian? You, you can't get away No. It? Beans. We've gone <laughs> off beans as well. It's terrible. But no, on a serious note, I mean, yeah, no. everyone says if we want to save the planet, we've got to start eating more plant-based food, right? Yeah. So are you having to respond as a chef? Yeah, big time, yeah. We've got, um, it was, if I'm honest with you, uh, it was a criticism of me at the restaurant originally was there wasn't enough vegetarian choices. Okay. Um, and I was getting that feedback, not all the time, but regularly. Yeah. Um, and you've got to react to it. Yeah. You know, you've got to feed people uh, what they would like to be fed. Yeah. You know, um, yep. and we've done that now, so. Yeah. Anyone in the audience vegetarian? No. Anyone flexitarian? No. You're bucking the trend. How are we doing, Joe? You all right? How's college? Yeah, it's good. Right, Mark, I'm just going to get the. Uh, yeah, what do we need, Chef? Chicken wings in the uh, finished edition of pan. Yeah, okay. There. So, if you're doing this in service, Tim, what do you, what do you have done in advance? Obviously, the chicken wings, do you? Um, yeah, well, every, but yeah, but everything gets done to order. The okay. Sauce, yep. Everything. So, um, these go in skin side down to recrisp them. Um, and we just pop them in the oven briefly, just just to get like a proper roast chicken. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Mark. So they go in the pan. As you can all see, they're from there. They'll go to the golden brown. 
okay? And then we're going to crisp them those up. And uh, don't grab metal pan handles when they've been in the oven because they're really, really hot. Classic error. And don't put plastic lid tops yeah, in so the oven either. Basically, I'll sack, I'll sack Cara and myself <laughs> afterwards. So, so chicken wings there. You can kind of, when they're ready for the oven, they start popping like it just did then. So we're going to get that into the oven. I guess that's the fat, is it? Yep, from back out the skin mark as it gets hot, yeah. That goes in there. Going to give Ooh. this uh, induction yep. a wipe down. Sure. Well, as Tim's having a wipe down, has anyone not had a raffle ticket? Okay, the reason we're asking you is this gentleman is very kindly going to give you, or he's, he's got a prize of a dinner for two uh, at the Flitcher Bacon. So if you have a raffle ticket, we're going to put it into the pot and then we're going to draw you out. Um, and Tim is going to be cooking a full tasting menu for you plus one at the Flitcher Bacon. So Joe's nearly done the celery act. She's doing a great job there. Um, start putting it in the cups for us, Joe, and then we'll get that into the audience. So in, in there, Mark, we've got uh, a little bit of... Um, i add some water back to that one, shall I? Right. And into this, we're just going to add the, uh, the cat's oil to give us that balance between the chicken and the smokiness of the uh, smoked fish element. Have you been to Japan, Tim? No. Nope. No. Nope. Daniel's been, hasn't he? Uh, not sure. Has he not, no? Not sure. Probably. He can, he can pay next time he goes for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you tell him that. <laughs> Be nice. So this with this, we're just getting a balance between a, a red I bet he's watching. Probably. A roast chicken flavour and a smoked fish flavour. So, it should be roughly that kind of consistency. And in true Blue Peter style, here's some I prepared earlier. Awesome. Do we have someone from UCB that could take this round for us? Right. So, we've got some of the celery act coming into the audience now. Have a little taste. Do the chicken on it first, Mark. Oh, you want to put chicken on it first? Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. You really have read the brief. Okay, great. Right, watch, your, watch your fingers on that because obviously it's hot. Okay, get a spoon down there. That's it. Spoon a little bit of chicken in there as well. It's great. Thanks, Joe. And once the chicken's on, Tim, it can go out, or you got anything else no, to go? No, gonna, cool. Gonna, yeah, no, it's cool. Gonna get a little bit of the yeah, uh, yeah. katsu on those all, Mark. Now, at the end of this, we're gonna have a, a, a little Q and A session. For those of you who want to ask a question, you will get the opportunity to walk away with a world famous staff canteen mug. Um, these are found in the world's best kitchens. We were in Quique de Costa in Spain uh, two months ago. We've got a lovely photo of Quique. We've got Gordon Ramsay holding one of these, Marco Pierre White, so on and so forth. So you get the, if you ask a question, you'll be, you'll be given a staff canteen mug. Hey, money can't buy staff canteen mug. Have you got staff canteen mugs at the Flitch? Certainly have. You have, yeah. I need some more though, Mark. <laughs> don't, we, don't we all? Don't you <laughs> No, somebody broke mine. Not theirs. Okay, chef, tell us what we're doing. What are we up to? So just finishing the the, the katsu sauce there. Yep. Um, a little bit of uh, molden and a little bit of um, lemon just to bring the acidity back. So gently reheat the leeks. But we're going to take those off now. So just reheat in there. But How we are we doing, Joe? That's it, Joe. You you've always got to save a bit for yourself, all right? Whenever you do anything like that. Okay, that's the rules. You have to have like a chef's portion. There's a little bit of the. Yeah, so the in there then, Tim, we've got barbecue celery. Yeah. We've got the chicken wings. Yeah. And then we've got the sauce that you're going to be serving. Yeah. So this is the this so is the this is the, this is the this is the multiplication of vinegars that Joe made earlier. Okay. Going over the top that brings the acidity. Obviously, these are just tiny little tasters, Mark. So it won't be. Full yeah. Of, no. Of course. Of course. Okay. If we can get that. Happy with that, chef? Can that go? No. No, we've got something else to go on. <laughs> Bit of sauce. It That's all right. This, this is what makes it, so. Who's hungry? Hands up, who's a chef? Yeah. Well, that's good. Okay. If anyone wants to come and work for you, Tim, what they got to do? Phone me. Phone you? Is there, is there like a link on the website they can apply? Yeah, there yeah. Is. It's, got my, it's got my email. And stuff okay. On there. Absolutely. Have a great, Mark. 
So if you go onto the Flitcher Bacon website, there's an email for Tim if you want to go and work for him. You do stages, Tim, or not? Yeah, absolutely. St stages. So if you want to go and work for Tim. Absolutely. We're searching for two. If you, two if, you, guys, you if you follow him on Instagram, he's promised to follow you all back, every single one of you. Haven't you, Tim? I have. <laughs> when I get time to look at it. <laughs> Isn't that often? Right, Joe, I'd like to pass that Okay, around. do you want... One super. One second, Koji. Are you going to take that in for me, sir? There you go. Thank you, Reese. What's that? What's that, Chef? You didn't tell us that one. What's that? That's the co that's the code. Oh, that's the okay. Yeah. It's really important. Right. Enjoy, everyone. Okay. Be interested to know your thoughts. Have a taste. Let us know what you think. And Mark, I'm going to start on the plate. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. Yeah. So what we need to do. Is if you carry on, pull you down to there, look. like that, right? Yep. And then wherever you want to go, mate. Is it play, play there? Well, you finished that, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Tim's now ready to plate up. Um, so he's going to be plating up his chicken wing dish for us. There are spoons on the trade if you want, if you need a spoon. By all means, use your fingers. It's fine. We're all friends. <laughs> but that's what food needs to be about, right? It's fun. Yes, it is. Absolutely. That's the chicken wings, Mark. So they're beautifully caramelised on the skin side. Uh, moist underneath. Awesome. Not bad for a guess, really. And then we've got the leeks in there. I'm going to take out the second lightly season. How is it, guys? Nice? Yeah? You have to say that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. What are you lost, Chef? Uh, salt. Salt? I'm going blind. Uh, no, it no. No, it doesn't matter. Do we have salt anywhere, guys? It's fine. Oh, here we go, Chef. Here you go, here you go. Oh, Use much. that till you find the one you're looking for. The mill. I think used, not used to mills. I think that's out of my kitchen. It definitely looks like a it, domestic It is, version. I think that's my... <laughs> is that out of our kitchen? Yeah, it is. There's mould and salt there, Chef, for you. So we've got the chicken wings, we've got the celery uh, we've got the little steamed leeks. Those hats a little, um, just to sit the chicken on, basically. So this is on the tasting menu. Where on the tasting menu does it come, Tim? Uh, second course. Second course, okay. Yeah. We have a carrot, a uh, dish of carrots on the starter. It sounds uh, ominous, but it's really beautiful. Really, really good feedback for the uh, carrots at the current stage. Okay, Joe, do you want to come get beside and Joe? pick a little pelouches of this ready for us? That'd be great. So these have got a, quite some quite nice flavours here. We've got shizu, purple shizu, coriander, and Thai basil, and a bit of apple blossom for acidity. Yeah, so just pick it up like that. Oh, that chicken's good, huh? Finger licking. Just these the breadcrumbs. <laughs> Over there, so a bit of coriander, like that. And just do me three of those, like that. Yeah, that'd be great. So one little stem of each, yeah? Right. So we get the leeks onto the plate there, Mark. Initially. Ladies and foodsmiths, how is it? Is it nice? Yeah? Good. So, Tim, you said this is slightly larger than the portion you would normally do, right? Yeah. There's obviously on a tasting menu. How many courses? Uh, seven. Seven. Yeah, yeah, seven. Okay. So, uh, where's my? Are we are we moving away from tasting menus now? Do you think in the industry? Um, I've always done both. Both. Um, what you lost, chef? The squeeze a bottle of the. Uh, um, I think he might have gone. Is gone. he in? Got it? Yeah, we'll we'll get it. We'll get it for you. Don't worry. He might have gone next door. I think it's fine. I use that one, Mark. So. Sure. Yeah. yeah it's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's a there's kind of like a a trend of you know, you know tasting menus make sense for restaurants. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course you know, they do. Um, of course they do. There you go. In in a in a situation where the industry and the guests are changing, does everyone want to sit down and eat seven, ten, Have twelve courses? That time? Uh, yes. I'm just well, going to move. Do that's that right. That's right. So that's the 
the glaze going on the plate. Vinegar really glaze. Okay, celeriac on top. This just been through the oven. As you can see, it's slightly caramelized. I quite like the change that the heat does to the to the rice. That goes on top. Love it. That. Is it us? Got a whistling noise. No, not us. No. And then a bit that we couldn't show on here is obviously got some chicken chicken skin here. Cooked for an hour. Um, no, it's not the family. I think I heard you that it does. That was my fault. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and that's crispy skins there, just to add some texture back into the dish. And obviously bring back that, that real authentic roast chicken flavour. And then, just to finish, our aromatic herbs from Westlands. Do me a massive favour, once you've done that, don't touch that plate, all right? Yeah. Thai basil, the shizzo, the aniseed flavours in there, coriander, and the apple blossom. So, real kind of like rhubarb -y slash apple style flavours. That's roast chicken wings, that's for sugar. Are. Tim, one more time, give us a dish title, please. It's uh, roast chicken wings, light steamed leaves. Ah, ah, don't touch the plate, I said. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot about that bit. But I won't touch the plate. You know why, right? It, all joking aside, the moment chefs do a dish, they push it over a hot plate, don't you? Yeah, right? Yes. There's literally that reason. I don't know why, but it, give did, us it, it did say don't touch it. Give us a dish title, chef. So, so it's roast chicken wings, uh, uh, barbecue celeriac, Koji and a crispy chicken skin. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the amazing Tim Allen. Thanks, Mark. Okay, I'm going to come down into the audience for questions. Uh, Tim's going to answer questions. Uh, then we're going to get cleared down. So who's got a question for Tim and who wants a world famous The Staff Canteen mug? Yes, sir, I'll come to you first. So if you can introduce yourself and then ask the question to Tim, all right? Hi, Tim, I'm Stu from Sushi Sushi. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Um, do you think that it's important about um, necessarily sticking to tradition with as far as flavours are concerned? Obviously, this time you've used Japanese flavours yeah. in, in your cooking, but do you think you can completely go anywhere with ingredients? I, I think you can, Stu. Yeah, I think it's all about, it's all about just bringing flavours together um, and, and taste. First and foremost, taste things, combine things, learn, educate yourself, and also go, obviously go into different cultures and learning that as well from bringing it back and how you fuse it together. So I don't think there's any boundaries with food. I think it's just about taste and palate and how it all comes together at the plate. Brilliant. Cheers. Great question. And yes, sir, I'll just come over. This is a microphone, right? So when I put it in, you yeah, don't go like this. OK? Yeah. So if you introduce yourself and then ask Tim the question. Uh, my name's Carl Brown. Hi, Carl. Um, what's your most popular dish on the menu? Um, at the minute, the most popular dish is carrots. So we do it, we do it in various ways. Um, we bake some in hay on papillot, so like steamed in hay, and then we peel them and then we semi-dehydrate them, and then we vac them back in fresh carrot juice. Uh, that's one element, there's pickles, mousse, pesto from the top, so we use the whole thing, powder from the skin. And it's feedback's really strong from customers, so the carrots. Thank you. Great question. Yes, madam. If you can introduce yourself to Tim and then ask him the question. Hi, I'm Liza Thorpe from CMS. Um, Hello. Sorry. It's a general question on that. Is it, don't, don't push it away, you need to talk into if it. If you wanted to change that to a vegetarian recipe, would you have a suggestion what you could place, replace the chicken with? Easily. Just um, I would barbecue, keep the barbecue celeriac, keep the leeks. I'd do some crispy celeriac skins on top and then keep, take the celeriac juice, make it like a warm vinaigrette from that, which is exactly the same concept as the chicken. Emulsify that some fresh herbs, just drop that on the plate, it would be beautiful, just as, just, as, just as nice to eat. Without like a protein, no, nothing? No. Okay. No, nope, it eat full firmly just in that way. It's quite when you eat the slayer act done this way, it's almost got a not a meat not a meatiness, but it's a, a very richness, a deep richness to it. Okay. Very fulfilling. Thank you. Pleasure. That's a great question. There you go. Okay, time for one more question. Yes, sir. You introduce yourself to Tim, then I'll You're right. Uh, Hi, yeah. I'm Ben. I was just asking, what's your opinion on apprentices? On apprentices? Yeah. Great thing. We should be doing more of it. Uh, we're not encouraging it enough in the industry. We need apprentices in, into kitchens and learning from an early age, sensibly with a good mentor and good tutor, to develop the basic skills. We, we need to be doing it. We should be bringing it back. We used to do apprenticeships in the UK in, in many different industries. We don't do enough of them anymore. Yeah. More of it. Cheers. Thank you.
Okay, anyone else? I will do one more if there's one more. Yes, madam. Okay. I've done 4,000 steps doing this yesterday. <laughs> if you introduce yourself to Tim and then ask the question. Hi, I'm Mo Adaba. I Hi need yeah. to ask the chicken, if I don't want to use chicken breast and I don't like cerealia, is there any other veg or part of the chicken that I can use to make? You, you, don't, you don't like wings? No, I don't really like because of the bone. I know you've taken it out, but if I'm, they're messing, messing about with air, will already tick me off. Like, oh, you just no, want to have some pure You could just use breast. To oh. honest, then is it not going to be too dry? No, not if you cook it nicely. All oh, right, then. <laughs> 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 okay. So, lady, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. The amazing Tim Allen. Thank you very much, Tim. Hey guys, thank you. Okay, uh, so we should get a graphic comes up that says thank you now. We're going to whisk Tim away. Oh, no, yeah, sorry, raffle, raffle, sorry. Of course. So, don't go away, because if, you, if you've got a raffle ticket, Tim, do you want to draw one out, please? Yeah. Just while Tim's doing that, put your hands together also for Joe from UCB College. Well done, Joe. Uh, the winner is number 95. Ninety-five, anyone? Ninety-five. One more time, and I get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's near, nearest bet, yeah. That's, that's like hitting the post. That's not a goal, is it? <laughs> well, some, some Ninety-five. No, we draw Make it again. One. Make another one. Lou, draw it again. Yep. Random one. A hundred and four. Hundred and four. <laughs> and you have got the same the same numbers went in the pot as they took, yeah? Just to clarify. 104. <laughs> Don't get 103, right? <laughs> 104. Hey. Yay! <laughs> okay, listen, while you're doing that, we're going to whisk Tim away to do some media work. Um, I'm sure Tim will stick around if you want photos with him. Uh, we're going to do some media work with Tim. We're going to get cleared down. And at 12 o'clock on the stage, we've got Ellis Barry. Tim, in the nicest possible way, jump over there, sir. Well done. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you at 12 o'clock. Well done, Joe.